once upon a time in a country called Costa Rica, there was a girl named Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, <clears throat> I mean Little Red Coffee Hood. She worked in the family coffee farm. Bye-bye, Mama. Once a week, she went to visit her grandmother, who lived at the other end of the forest. As she strolled through the bright colored slopes, Little Red Coffee Hood picked red ripe coffee cherries to take to Granny as a present. Her grandmother was the guardian of the family coffee tradition, but she was, at the time, a little worried. Oh, will I have enough energy to continue? Each day my body is getting weaker. I just hope that new generations will understand the value of tradition. But let's continue with our story. Coffee grew everywhere in these fertile valleys. It was an ideal place to harvest high mountain-grown coffee. It had perfect weather, volcanic soil, the right temperature, lots of rain, plenty of sun, and hard-working people. Like me. Costa Ricans planted only Arabigas in order to obtain a high-quality coffee recognized all over the world. Costa Rica counts with more species of birds than U.S. and Canada together, and we have national parks and reserves protecting one-fourth of our territory. Indeed, nature has blessed this land. All kinds of species, plants and animals, live in the unspoiled rainforest of Costa Rica. Oh yeah, all kinds. In the late 18th century, something happened. Coffee was introduced. Once the potential of this crop was established, the authorities gave free land to anyone who cared to plant the new seeds. From that day on, Costa Rican farmers began the love affair with coffee that has lasted for more than 200 years. Because everyone had their own piece of land, everybody benefited from the coffee boom. That is why we say Costa Rica is a coffee democracy. Coffee receiving stations of different millers developed close to the farms and provided a wide range of options for the producers. Today, Costa Rica, a country without an army, is riding in the fast lane. Education, highly qualified personnel, and new business opportunities make it an attractive site for new wave companies. But not everything is perfect in our coffee democracy. Ah, ah, I hate nature and birds, and I hate a little red coffee hood. <laughs> I am winning, her grandmother, the guardian of the family coffee tradition. <laughs> Finally loosen that faith in the future. <laughs> My granny says that the coffee plant is part of the family. She grows with us, we play together, and all the family in the harvest fiesta glorifies the red ripe fruit that will become the golden bean. She also told me to be careful of the peat bad wolf. Beware, hmm? there are ugly forces working against our long-lasting coffee tradition. Hmm? Beware. But Little Red Coffee Hood was careful. She knew the power of tradition, and she loved to see men, plants, and animals living in harmony. Well, hello. Fred Coffee Drinker is my name. Pleased to meet you. Hello. Nice to meet you. After this wild encounter, Fred Coffee Drinker and Little Red Coffee Hood became acquainted, for the foreigner was interested in how we grew our superb coffees. 
Where did you learn your English? At the local public school. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> First, we plant the seeds in the nursery. A couple of weeks later, we see the newborns. We plant these babies, two in each hole, so the coffee plant will grow stronger and more productive. We keep plantations with regulated shade, so the sun comes in just the right amount. Not too much or too little. The coffee plantation is like a baby forest producing a rich organic mulch that is rich in abundant forms of life. One of the main secrets of Costa Rican coffee is that it is hand-picked when the fruit is at its best. Only the red cherries are taken from the plant, the others are left to ripen. To preserve the high quality developed in the field, Costa Rica uses the wet milling process. Here, the fruit is mechanically separated from its pulp. The drying of the beans is the next step. Our grandfathers used the sun to dry the golden grain, but today there are other excellent methods. Little Red Coffee Hood explained that the guardiolas emulate the sun, and at very low temperature, they slowly dry the beans when the patios are full or the sun is not available. Prior to export, coffee beans are sorted by weight, size, and color in order to meet the demands of the buyers. This takes place at the dry mill. Wow, Little Red Coffee Hood, it's really windy here. <laughs> yes, it's because we are right here on top of this mountain. But let me tell you something. You see, in Costa Rica, we seek the best cup quality, but also we care for nature. That's important. All of our 100 beneficios have sedimentation basins, where residual waters from the coffee process is rejuvenated. Also, the volume of water used has decreased in order to meet new standards and regulations. The pulp, the main component of the fruit, is stored separately and recycled until it becomes an organic fertilizer. This way, it returns to the soil. Other byproducts of the coffee process are also recycled. The great variety of Costa Rican coffees contribute to the expansion of the gourmet industry, offering a wide range of different tastes to satisfy the consumer's most discriminating palate. Although recently introduced, organic plantations and mills have opened a new market segment and are growing steadily. Origin coffees also represent a new cluster. Well, Little Red Coffee Hood, I found out that the unsurpassed quality of Costa Rican coffee comes from a combination of four unique factors. Mm -hmm. First, uh, Arabica variety. Yeah. Second, an optimum agroecological balance. <laughs> right. Third, cherries that are picked by hand. <laughs> and fourth, an exclusively wet milling process. Mm -hmm. And lots and lots of love and care. Speaking of which, uh, Little Red Coffee Hood, you haven't told me anything about yourself. Well, I was born in this region. My family has 10 hectares of coffee that we harvest faithfully every year. In this way, my father raised my brothers and sisters. The coffee crop gives us a good life. Our house is on our small farm. We all go to school. And during vacation, coffee picking is our sport. In my family, I learned the value of tradition, but I also grew open to change. Next year, I'm going to college. That's wonderful. <laughs> Good luck, Little Red Coffee Hood. Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, things were not so romantic at the other end of the forest. Tell me, Caporecito. Tell me, Caporecito. Oh. Oh. The wall detector has been activated. My grandmother is in danger. Hurry. Open the door, you old traditional grandmother! Nobody cares about you! Grandma, Grandma, are you okay? <laughs> Oh, <sighs> <sighs>
<laughs> Nobody cares about our family coffee tradition. <laughs> But drama. We care. I care. And Fred, coffee drinker, also loves our family tradition. Don't you, Fred? Yes, Granny. I I do. I really do. Is this true? Yes, Grandma. Fred, coffee drinker. Do you recognize the high quality of the Costa Rican strictly hard bean? Yes, Granny, I do. You understand that these words are being recorded and can be used against you? Uh. Mm, yes, Granny, I I do now. Are you willing to pay a premium for our excellent coffees? Granny, I'll always pay a premium for a great tasting cup of coffee. In that case, I declare you producer and consumer. It is your common goal to raise the best quality coffees born in the mountains and valleys of Costa Rica and to nurture them with love and care. I'm not so sure they lived happily ever after. But they sure raised a hell of a coffee. Mm. And that's how Little Red Coffee Hood saved the authentic taste of Café de Costa Rica. <laughs>